good morning, everybody, and welcome to our workshop, our technical workshop number four. And today we will have a couple of topics. We are going to talk about the, the results of the, of the interpretation of our assignment program acquired in the Las Mercedes area, Catatumbo Basin. And also uh, that uh, talk is going to be given by Daniel Rodriguez. And we will have up as well the, the, the talk uh, called Area with the Production Return to the A&H, Morichito, Janus Basin. And uh, this talk is going to be, be given by uh, uh, Arles Gutierrez. Both of them uh, uh, professionals uh, uh, working for, for the A&H. Okay, never, no, I mean, it's a pleasure for us to, to give you news that we, we, we that we are keeping our our offer to pay for data if you decide to 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 evaluate areas in frontier areas in the, in the country, and if you are interested in that kind of work, that kind of evaluation, you can contact Pedro Rangel at the Geological Survey. He is in charge, and you can submit your application there. And uh, shortly, we will give you some news about the, the, the support, the technical support, and the financial support for students in the last year, or people uh, recently graduated. I mean, so uh, it's a program that the agency is going to, to, to finance, and uh, if you are interested, you can uh, find out more details through Diana Rua in Minciencias, and that is going to be in place at this program in, in, in the third quarter. Okay, today we are ended up with uh, our first uh, set of uh, technical workshops in February. I mean, so four in total, and we have already the program for March. So we will have uh, in March 4th, we will have the geological survey talking about new maps of gravimetric and magnetic field anomalies in Colombia. This is a great product. It's something that the, the service, the geological survey has compiled for several years. And you are going to find out an interesting uh, aspect from this uh, uh, technical uh, topics uh, on our next talk on March 4th. On March 11, we will have the UPTC talking about gas. That is going to be the, one of the most interesting uh, uh, topics, assessment of gas prospectivity in Colombia on shore basins with hydrocarbon commercial production. That it was a work that the, the UPTC uh, carried out during the, the uh, 2021. Uh, so you, you, you will find that uh, very interesting. We hope to have plenty of people here to find out what are the, the, the fair ways the playful ways for gas in, in, in our country. On March 18, we will have again our uh, geological survey on all, uh, its technical uh, experts talking about new findings on petroleum exploration in the Paleozoic in the Llano Basin. Very interesting topic um, for those uh, groups that are looking for new opportunities at the Paleozoic. And we will close up on, uh, on March 25th with a workshop organized by the ANH. We are going to talk about the, the, the findings of the program acquired by the agency in the Lower Magdalena Basin uh, Arjona area. And also we will talk about a, a, an area with production return to the ANH in the Rio Ariari uh, area in the Llano Basin. So that is the program for March. And uh, we hope that you join us there. So, Last week, this was the situation for our technical workshops. I mean, so we, we have a total of 11 opportunities uh, identified and given during the month, okay, during, during the month. Uh, we were talking about the BIM 40, remember in the lower mark, prospectivity at the level of the Cienaga de Oro formation and others. We were to, we were talk also in our work, you know, first workshop about the CPO 71 where where the Atarraya field was located, 
and we jump into the middle mark and we and the and, and the universidad uptc talk about the north the prospectivity in the north part of the middle mark there we we, we identify at the basal tertiary and cretaceous um, um, unit we identify three blocks bm 33-1 bmm 33-2 and bmm 27-1 Okay, that is one of the illustration of that play per way uh, with the existing fields and also with the existing infrastructure there. And later in our workshop last week, the Universidad de Caldas gave us a talk about the, 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 the different opportunities in the southern part of the middle map. And there we, we, we they illustrated several opportunities in the southern part and in the eastern side of the basin at the Simarena Umir formation level. Also in the central part uh, at the level of the Esmeralda formation. Okay. And also in the western part of the basin along the Mugrosa formation and others play per waste map uh, opportunities. Okay. So at that time, the university just uh, told us that we have several opportunities along the BMM 63, BMM 22, BMM 30, BMM 31, BMM 66, BMM 67. And uh, that, that's all are the same blocks with the, all the oil fields in trend. In trend and all the existing infrastructure there for the, on those uh, uh, close to those uh, blocks. Okay, so today uh, we have the pleasure to show you three more opportunities for your evaluation. We are going to jump into the Catatumbo Basin and we are going to illustrate what were the results of the seismic acquired by the ANH back in the years 2019 and, 20, and 2020. And so the, there, uh, Daniel is going to tell us what were what, what was the interpretation in CAT six and CAT seven. And closing up the, the talk this morning, we, we will have uh, Alice Gutierrez talking about these opportunities in the CPO one one, where the Morichito field is located. Okay. Uh, in briefly, I just are giving you a, a brief. Uh, summary, so that is the assignment program of La Mercedes, the layout of the, the assignment program. And uh, that's our, uh, and Daniel will tell us what kind of uh, hydrocarbon we have there and in what, in what um, uh, amount, uh, what, what amount the hydrocarbons are present there, what volume we have there. That is the Catatumbo 6, 7, the oil fields in train and uh, the infrastructure uh, uh, present there. And Late in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the hour, we will jump into the Janus Basin where we have the CPO 1 1. We have the Morichito area here. We have the Caracara block. Okay, so we will find out if, what are the opportunities in trend with the Rancho Quemado area, Ocelote, eh, Alape, etc. Okay, well. Um, so we, we, with these uh, three more blocks, we will have a, a total of a total of 14 opportunities already listed. Uh, you can access that information in our website. Uh, the, 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 the talks that are going to be given, given today, obviously it will be loaded uh, uh, in our website uh, next week, but you can access a, any of those 14 presentations in our website. And if you are interested in having a, a workshop with us uh, here in the, in the agency or all of professional are ready to give you that talk. So don't hesitate to contact me if you, or, or the, the BPAA, the Vice Presidencia de Promociones y Asignación de Areas in, in, in the agency and organize the workshop. They, they, they will organize the, the workshop for you. Okay, so let me just give you the some summary of the speakers today. Daniel Rodriguez is a geologist from the National University of Colombia, graduated in 2017. Uh, and also he is a geophysicist from the University, University of Leeds in England. Daniel has 
uh, being a more than he has more than four years of experience working for companies such as Oxy and then during the last three years for the ANH. We have also the pleasure to have Alice Gutierrez, geologist, graduated from the National University of Colombia in 2006 with more than 12 years of experience in the industry. In the industry, he has worked for several companies such as Garantierra, Emerald, and he has been during the last four years working for the ANH. Welcome and thank you for joining us every Friday. We hope that this information is, uh, is important for all the, your decision at the core of your company. So it's a pleasure for me to introduce um, uh, Daniel, Daniel Rodriguez. Daniel, go ahead, please. Thank you, Miguel. So welcome, everyone. I will be presenting today, as Miguel mentioned, the, um, the, the seismic program acquired by the agency into 2019 known as Las Mercedes 2D. So, this is the seismic program acquired by the ENH, Las Mercedes 2019. The content of the talk of today will be the location of the seismic program, which of the areas that Miguel have talked about are involved into this one, some generalities that is going to have a bit of the geology, the structural geology, geology the stratigraphic, the stratigraphy of the area. Afterwards, we will be talking about Las Mercedes to, to the seismic program, how it was acquired, uh, the processing sequence that was used, the seismic quality of it, and at, uh, at least but the seismic interpretation at the end, uh, where we will be having the structural map of the Aguardiente formation with some of the potential resources that we can have over there. So firstly, we'll be starting with the location. The location of the seismic program is located at CAT7, that is nearby a CAT6. In fact, the seismic program is sharing both of these areas. We'll have a nearby at the east, a, what is called Carbonera block, that has a uh, have uh, one of the most uh, wells uh, production uh, gas from the Catatumbo for a uh, that is called Cerro Gordo. All of these blocks are located into the north of the Santander department. So, as mentioned here, we got CAT 6, CAT 7, and CAT 8. And inside of CAT 7, we'll have both of the Carbonera areas. One of, the, uh, one of those uh, is one of the exploration and production, and the other one is just in exploration. So some generalities about the basin. So here we got the Catatumbo heat surf exploration. The Catatumbo basin shares with the middle Magdalena basin, the first commercial production in the country since 1920s. A total of 872 wells have been drilled. 3,874 kilometers of G to the seismic have been acquired since then. 12 oil and gas have been discovered, fields have been discovered being the most important, Rio de Oro, Tibuso Cuavo, Carbonera, Sardinata, Rio Zulia, Petrolia, and Puerto Huarco. The cumulative production of the basin exceeds 415 million barrels per day sorry, 450,000 uh, barrels per day, and uh, 500 uh, giga uh, cubic feet of, of gas. Its estimated exploratory potential varies uh, between 700,000 uh, of, of barrels per day uh, and uh, 200 mil, uh, barrels. In order to reactivate the exploration in the area, the INH acquired a 2D seismic program of 114 kilometers into the area of the Esperanza Wells. In fact, it's in the, in the municipality of the, of the La Esperanza. It's in this area. So a bit of the, of the, of the, of the basin. So here we got the map of the Buguea anomaly and the general structural elements. So we got our main gravimetric features of the area. As you can see in here, we got two, even three into this area. 
three different depot centers that are referred or are characterized by quite negative anomalies. And as well, we will have two, two positive anomalies. The first one that is in blue is related to the Serranillo del Perija. And the, one, and the one that is a bit southern is the positive anomaly represented the Santander made massive. So here we got the stratigraphic setting for all, all of you that maybe are not familiarized with the Catatumbo Basin. So we got Cata Carbonera, Mirador and Barco, as the same as in Llanos, have been identified as the main reservoirs in the area of Astilleros, Carbonera, and Rio Zulia West area. Into the Cretaceous, we have La Luna and Aguardiente that have been identified as the main reservoirs in areas such as Sardinata and Cerro Gordo. Of course, La Luna is uh, developed as a with secondary porosity made by fractures, and La Luna acts as its own source and seal. The reservoirs, as in Cerro Gordo field, are associated to secondary porosities due to the natural fracture of limestones. Tibu and Mercedes, that are in the early Cretaceous, act as the source of the gas that could be present into Aguardiente formation. The reservoirs of the Aguardiente formation are mainly short face sandstones of high lateral continuity. In some parts of the basin, uh, it's possible to see Aguardiente formation that is not only sandstones, is as well combined with limestones. So we got some sort of, of sandy limestone, limestones uh, in some parts. So this is a bit about the structural framework of the area. So we got two different major structural styles that have been proposed into the literature. The first one is one domain that is characterized by reverse faults that affect the basement. So we got some sort of the faults are thick skin and faults that occurs in the Western side. So we got these sort of faults that if you, if you can see the main sequence or the main units that are involved into these this zone or the structural domain are mainly Cretaceous. And we got a second one that are characterized by thrust faults associated with wrenching and reverse faults and faults associated to bending in the western and eastern sides into the flexure zone. So that's Miocene to Pliocene age. As well, you can see into the inner area that we got with opposing verging we got some thin skin faults, some leak streak faults that got a, a more um, compressive character than these ones that are related mainly to a strike slip faults. So this is the setting for La Esperanza, Cerro Gordo and Rio Zulia. In this area where it is uh, called La Esperanza Dome is where the study seismic program of Las Mercedes was acquired. We got as well Cerro Gordo, that is the nearby uh, field to the area. This one produces gas from La Luna, a secondary porosity, as mentioned before. We got here Cerro Fault, and we had here one of the major faults that in some parts are called Hortensia Fault. In other sections are called Aguardiente Fault. And this one puts in contact or in juxtaposition, put the, uh, the early Cretaceous and upper Cretaceous with some tertiary units. So this one, the throw is quite high. As well, we got in the Eastern section, the anticlines related to these faults in here that uh, involves mainly tertiary units. And from these anticlines is where uh, fields as Rio Zulia West and, this, uh, and, and Rio Zulia are located. So uh, a bit reminder uh, of which of the main units that are produced in the units and into the different fields. So for Las Mercedes area, where we got Cerro Gordo, we need to bear in mind that we got this one, the upper and lower Cretaceous units that are producing from these fields, fields such as Tibú, Petrolia, Cerro Gordo, Cerrito, Puerto Huarco, Sardinata, and the rest are the same ones, but they are repeating in different units. So this is the that database exist, existing uh, when the seismic was acquired. 
So this one in orange is the seismic of Las Mercedes 2019. When this was, was acquired, we used Catatumbo 76 in order to create an interpretation and to know which was the best part of, uh, to acquire, of acquiring this, this seismic survey. So into the area of CAT6 and CAT7, we have four different 2D seismic surveys. We got Catatumbo 76, Catatumbo 77, Catatumbo 86, and from 2019, we got Las Mercedes. And this is the database of the wells. So we got into the northern area, we got the Esperanza wells, that the, there were three different wells that were drilled by Ecopetrol into the 80s. We got, as mentioned, the Cerro Gordo wells that are part of the, of the Cerro Gordo field. And we got as well another uh, wells at the north that are called Eslabones and Tres Piedras that are just uh, some wells that help us to identify some of the main units into the area. If you can see, most of the wells got a total depth of around 7,000 feet. However, we got another wells, such as the ones of Cerro Gordo, that are a bit shallower than the, than the ones at the, at the first rows. Those are the main infrastructure that we got nearby into the area. So we got different pipelines. One of them are the Tibucoveñas, one of the main pipelines into the, into the country. And as well, we got um, different stations. So we got Oru into the Cat 6, that is around approximately two, five kilometers. The Tibu, both of them, because we got two different stations at Tibu, one of them located four kilometers apart and the other one 5.5 5 kilometers. And as well, we got the one located at the south into the Rio Sulia area that is around 5.5 kilometers apart. So this is Las Mercedes to the seismic program that have been acquired. This was the initial layout that we proposed uh, to the uh, company that acquired the, the seismic program. But due to some problems into the social environment, um, due to as well for topography, we needed to, to change the initial layout to this one that we got in here. If you can see, we had a different, four different, in fact, into this area, those no, north to south are mainly uh, deep lines and the east to west will be the strike lines. It's a bit change or opposite to the rest of the country due to how the structure have been developed. But at the end, we acquired a uh, four long deep lines and we reduce the amount of seismic lines into the strike section. At the end, we acquired 137 kilometers of the seismic program. So this is the Esperanza well, the representative well of the area. As mentioned, Esperanza well was a well drilled by Ecopetrol in 1981. The well reached a total depth of 7,350 feet passing through units of the lower Cretaceous and basement, including Capacho, Aguardiente, and Tibu Mercedes. The target was the Uribante Group, that Uribante Group is Tibu Mercedes, and the Catatumbo Formation, that is the Eocene Formation. The structure, as they mentioned, was a faulted anticline, and at the time, two DSTs were taken, DST1 and DST2 at the Cogollo and Aguardiente, Cogollo Aguardiente, that are the same, just different names, formations. So non-commercial non quantities at the time of 900 of a thousand of cubic feet per day per day of a CO2 were, a get, a get, were gotten into the area in the Aguardiente formation. The fault have gave the closure was not found. So it meant that during the drilling of the well, they thought that they, according to the seismic interpretation, because at that time, the Catatumbo 66 seismic survey already existed. They thought that it was faulted and the well will take into the drilling the fault, but at the end it didn't. So as you can see here, the well started in the Mirador formation at, sur at, sur at surface and at the end it reached Tibu Mercedes at around 7,000 feet. 
This is the units, the main units. We got here Guardiente and Mercedes. As you can see here in to the Vichel, we got lens or maybe thick sequences of sandstones that were the ones that produced uh, the gas from the, from, the, from the tests. This is the, just, uh, the justification of the Las Mercedes 2D, why we acquired the seismic survey. So when we were doing the interpretation of this uh, using the Catatumbo 66 program, we saw that we have a bump or an anticline that it was worth uh, to, to see or to take a deeper view. So what we did was to plan the grid all over this one. We got here uh, the program that as far as I remember is the Gonzalez 3D, if I'm not wrong. And this one is the final layout that we have. So a potential structure of 5,065 acres could be mapped using two deep and two extract lines. And Las Mercedes 2D was acquired in order to prove it, its existence and to detail the geometry. So the proposed survey geometry was a total length of 171.5 kilometers into the total length into the full fault. Uh, so removing the tails, we will have 137 kilometers with five deep lines, nor northwest to southeast and five strike lines, northeast to southwest. So this is the surface geology where we acquired the seismic programs. So at surface, units such as Carbonera, Mirador, and Los Cuervos are outcropping. So it's, it's important to bear in mind that these units won't have any potential due to their cropping. The surface geology shows a giant monocline dipping towards the, north, no, the northwest with local faults and strike faults associated. Most of the strike faults, as we could see, uh, as we could see into Tres Piedras and into this area of Esperanza, are perpendicular to these faults in here, the faults of Las Mercedes and the fault of Aguardiente. So we got main faults, strike faults, perpendicular to these ones. Two major faults limit the structure. At the west, we got Falla de las Mercedes that put in contact the units from the tertiary in Cretaceous with this. Um, Santander Massif, at, at the east, we got Falla de Aguardiente that put in contact all the tertiary units with the, uh, from Rio Zulia with the Cretaceous units in the side of the basin. So this was the acquisition parameters, the two seismic acquisition parameters. So we got a shot point distance of 40 meters, a receiver point distance of 20 meters. So we got a relation two to one. The receivers that were used into this moment was a new technology, Geospace GS1 and the Cercel 508XT. So the wells for the sources uh, were drilled at 10 meters around to 28 feet. And the explosive weight that we used was 3,600 grams. The number of active channels per speed spread was the 36. 300, uh, 360 to four, uh, 400. And the length, the length of the re register was 6,100 milliseconds, with a total of well street or uh, drilled of 4,159. So this one is the topography that had to be faced during the acquisition. That was a tough one, as well to remind to all of you than what is Las Mercedes, Tibú, and the areas that are at the south and at the north as well, maybe the whole basin, got um, huge social issues that had to be addressed by the company. Petroseismic did a great job dealing with all of these pro problems or issues. And at the end, uh, the whole seismic survey could be acquired with a good quality. So uh, I would like to thank to Petroseismic due to their great job into the area. So this was the processing sequence that was used for processing the, the seismic uh, the seismic part. It's a quite straightforward. There's nothing new into this processing sequence. So the first thing that they did was a geometry check, um, PT gain recovery, quite straightforward, quite common. Coherent noise attenuation and spiking decon with some static corrections. In here, the static corrections were quite important due to the differences 
into the topographic levels. So we had the first velocity analysis, some residual correction, some FX filter for random noise attenuation, and at the end, uh, from passing from the stack to the PSTM, a Kirchhoff migration was used. After this one, again, a velocity analysis was run, and uh, again, into two different cycles. So this is the seismic quality that we could get. So we got this some of the strike lines from uh, north to south. As you can see, the seismic image of the program is quite good. We can see the main reflectors that are quite well defined. We can see the faults. We can see faults controlling the faults. And in here are the topographic that are, we got a complex topography. We can see that maybe the continuity of the reflections are a bit tough to get. This is quite normal. It doesn't mean that maybe all of this is controlled by faults. It just that sometimes in the, in the shorter offsets, it's a bit tough to get uh, imaging. And as well, due to the extensive topography, maybe the statics were quite complex. This is as well, the, the a second line. As you can see here, we got a structure, quite interesting structure with the, that's controlled by a fault in here. This one is the first deep line. As you can see here, we got many structures that are controlled by faults. Many of, the, many of them, uh, high angle faults that are controlling the, the whole area. This is the seismic interpretation that the ANH performed. So this one is for the deep line, as you can see here, high angle faults controlling some of the faults in here. This is the Mito Juan formation, as you can see by the seismic well tie between Esperanza and the seismic, La Luna into this area, Aguardiente that is into at the middle between La Luna and the Uribante group that has Mercedes Tibú, and the basement at the end. So this is the, as you can see, many of the faults are thick skin. They take into account the basement. This one, is the strike line that we can see into the Esperanza, another bump that was tried to be drilled by the by the Co-Patrol in the 80s. As here, you can see some of the faults that are related that uh, have a different faults into them that are, are, are a bit complex. And this is the structural map at the top of Uribante Group. So we can see that the Esperanza wells were drilled at the south. We got, we got here some of the strike faults that are mainly transpressive that create these faults into here are related. So it seems that it's likely to have two different new, new structures at the north and one into here where some of the Esperanza 1 and Esperanza 2 were drilled. But into this area, nothing has happened so far. So the invitation is that maybe testing this area could give a good amount of gas. So the high estimate is around 1,500 of acres. The best estimate that is located into this section got 840 acres. And the low estimate, this will be these ones. So our first glance, uh, quite simple volumetrics that we're calculating, assuming a porosity of 20% for, uh, for the sandstone of Aguardiente. You know that if we got short phase sandstones, it's quite likely that the porosity or the effective porosity would be a bit high. And a thickness, total thickness, the gross thickness of 340 feet. The net to gross was calculated into 50%, and the saturation of gas around 60%, quite similar to the ones into the found in Cerro Gordo. And the original gas in place in for the best estimate was calculated into 93.3 BCFs. So the conclusions for this part of the talk in order to give the stage to Arlex Gutierrez, the Catatumbo Basin is located at the northeastern part of Colombia with seven areas open for being nominated by for incorporation. We got the basin has a very long history of production since, since 1920s with 872 wells drilled and 3,874 kilometers of 2D seismic acquired. 12 oil and gas fields have been discovered and more than 21 isolated exploratory wells have been drilled. 11 3D seismic programs and 42 2D seismic programs have been acquired into the history of Catatumbo. 
The basin has a good infrastructure with five oil pipelines, including one of the most important pipelines of the country, Caño Limón Coenis. At the eastern part of the basin, the main reservoirs are located into the tertiary units. Remember, into the eastern part from the La, La Aguardiente Fault, that is where Rio Zulia are located. Carbonera, Mirador, Barco. Meanwhile, at the western section, where Las Mercedes and Cerro Gordo are located, the main reservoirs are La Luna, Aguardiente, and Tibu Mercedes, that is the Uriwanti group. Uh, to this seismic survey of 137 kilometers distributed into five deep lines and three straight lines were, were acquired, was acquired by the ANH in 2019 based on a map produced using the survey CAT 76 and the test information from the Well Esperanza 3K that produced a non-commercial non -commercial quantity of 900,000 of, of cubic feet per day of CO2. Las Mercedes 2D have been acquired in order to improve the existence and geometry of a possible giant gas lead at La Esperanza Municipality with the reservoir in sandstones of Aguardiente Formation. The quality of the seismic that have been acquired is really good with minor imaging issues due to excessive topographic variations. Aves estimates of 93.3 BCF of gas have been calculated with the new seismic interpretation using the new Las Mercedes 2019 survey. So thank you all of you for the presentation. Remember that this presentation will be uploaded into the web page of the ANH. So now I would like to give the stage to Arlex, to my partner Arlex Gutierrez for the fields into the Llanos Basin. Uh, thank you, Daniel. Uh, okay, uh, good morning to everybody. In this occasion, I'm going to present the Morochito field. That is an area with production returned on the ANH in the Janos Basin. Uh, this, this will be the agenda of these presentations. Uh, I start with the location next to the infrastructure and regional geological framework, followed with, with generalities, production, correlation of wells, structural maps, and volumetrics of the Morochito fields. Next, uh, CPO 1.1, prospectivity, and I will be finished with some conclusion and recommendation. I started with the location. The area of Morochito is located in the department of Casanare in the municipality of Mani. The CPO 11 block is located between the departments of Casanare and the and Meta department. Uh, to the south of the Caracara Association uh, in, the, in, the, in this uh, uh, in the east, the the one the LLA, the ja, uh, 104 block, and the north the remnant of the Morochito exploration block and the and the seven and the ja 71 block. The CPO 011 block was in total area on 160,371 hectares. In infrastructure, the Morochito field is connected by, by unpaved road to the urban area of, of Mani. Uh, the ABR2 and AB1 station are 80 kilometers, uh, no, 20, uh, 20, uh, uh, 28 kilometers, uh, 26 kilometers lineal from Morochito fields. In the sewers part of the CPO Wild block is crossing by the ODL Pipeline, the Oleocto of the Llanos Orientales. Uh, the regional framework, geological framework. On the left, we within the structural domain map, and the right, the Wheeler uh, Regional Stratigraphic Diagram. The northern part of the block, where the Morochito field is in the Casanare domain which are characterized by the normal antithetic fault. The surface part of the block is characterized by 
pelo of the bichada domain is characterized by the thin sedimentary section on lapping on the basement and normal faust and drape structures. Stratigraphic, stratigraphically, the block have uh, the sequence of the carbonera formation, uh, our op mirador formation discordant on the Cretaceous Guadalupe, Gachetan, and Une formation which are discordant sobre economic basement of the Paleocene rocks. The main reservoir is a mirador formation and the secondary reservoir is C7 level of Carbonera. The, block, the database of the block consists on six wells, six wells, uh, five in the Morochito area and the Sekai one well on the north. For 2D seismic, there are 106 profiles in 16 seismic programs with a lineal coverage of 905 kilometers. In the area, there are three 3D seismic programs with a coverage of 55 square kilometers. The area of Morochito is covered entirety by 3D seismic. The Morochito hydrocarbon exploration uh, exploitation contract was signed between the INH and Petropoli on May of 2005. The Morochito five well was drilled in March of 2010 and released uh, a total depth of 600 and 160 feet and producing from the mineral formation. The rise the 5,900 or oh, 5,902 feet of the mirador superior mirador uh, superior formation was tested, with producing 106 one barrel of fluid with 16 a a percent of oil and 32 percent percent of water. In the production life of the, the field between the February 2014 and March, uh, March of 2018, 176,678 barrels of 22 degrees API oil were produced. The Morochito 5 and the Morochito 5B wells are current currently inactive and pending to the abandoned. Uh, in the Morochito area, seed well was being drilled, starting with the Morochito one well in the 1990. This produced water in the open hole tested. Already in 2009, the operator drilled the well Morochito two, which tested the formation the the mirror formation and the Carbonera C7. We result on more than the 85% of water and oil on 22 degrees API. Subsequently, the, the well further north was drilled, which was called a uh, Morochito A1 with negative results. In the 2010, the discovery well Morochito 5 is drilled that tested hydrocarbon in Mirador with a percentage of water of 32% and also tests and sandy levels of Carbonera C7 with a higher water cut. Subsequently, the Morochito 5B well was drilled in a negative results. And in 2015, an, a new structure was drilled in the door of Morochito 2 with the results of the oil in Carbonera C7 with a high water cut. In this correlation, we can see the location of different tests carried out. To begin with the lower sand of Carbonera C7, and this is the Carbonera C7. I was stated four wells and three of them result on manifestation on high water. Uh, this, this, uh, this test con, eh, in eh, Carbonera C7, en Bototo 1, Morochito 2, and Morochito 5. 
The producing section of Miron is the highest sand with the producer of Morochito Fai. This is the, the highest sand of the, of the top of Mirador. It should be noted that the is level was not tested in Morochito one. And uh, the Morochito A1 uh, were, were quite uh, were tested in the in the sands of the Gacheta with the negative results. Uh, the Morochito five wells was put into continuous production as in the February 6 of 2014, which by which time it had a, com a cumulative production of 2,566 barrels. The production usually reflects a continuous decline of the oil producing from the approximately 600 barrels of oil per day in February 2014 to 49 barrel barrels of per day in March 2018 and the gradual decrease of increase of the water cutoff. From the 3.3% to 96.9%. This is observed that the well was in production with a hydraulic pumping as an artificial lifting system of approximately four years which is with, we can be monitored based in the production and dynamics, identified trending and value the estimated recovery, recovery, recoverable volumes. Here they, they have on the right, the map, the top of mirror of the Morochito 3, 3D semi program interpreted by the operator, where they provide structures and highlighted. Uh, this is the, the possible structures uh, interpreted by the operator. On the left, the approach of the area of Morochito Phi well, which is the producing wells in the area. In this slide on the left, show the, the deep line and the strike line where you can observe the quality of the seismic and highlight the deep section when no possible observe the default clearly that the operator interpreted to the limit the structure that the source. In the strike section in the, in the area, Morichito Sico, the, the closure on the north and the south of the structure. In this slide, the combination of the pseudo relief attributes with the inversion attributes, what made in the, of the observer the stratigraphic changes of the mirror section. In the time slide of the right in green, in, in this green, uh, you can see of the area of Morochito five would have an on four white closure. If we interpreted that the fault is no not noticeable uh, for this field, uh, where would be two possibilities: one, where the normal entity fact is the generator of the closure and the second that the structure of the four-way closure and the closing component is more of the stratigraphic types. For this interpretation, a better processing for the seismic is required. With respect to the volumetrics, the calculation was made from the maps presented at the value obtained coincide, coincided with the those reported by the operator. In the reserved report, uh, an operator estimated that, that there are still 273,000 barrels left to exploit it by improving the recovery of the field. The interpretation of the top of mirror was carried out and the conversion was made of that, uh, generating the closure and goes, goes from Morochito to, to Morochito five, with a total area of 593 acres. <clears throat> Performing the volumetric calculation with the last report recording factor, 
where could be some remaining resources of 400,000 barrel and using the recovery factor that we use it for the evaluation, these remaining resources could be 648 barrels. Uh, in the prospectivity or the rest of CPO11, for the, the two types of traps we observed. The first towards the southern surf, uh, uh, where a pinch out, pinch out of the of the Guadalupe uh, against younger rocks of the Mirador or Basal Carbonera. This second tram is monocline against the antithetical normal fold. Generally, the closure of three direction against the fold in this in this in this part of the block. It is possible that there are more trams within blocks, so we will continue with the reinterpret all the to this segment to be available to count the potential in this on this area. Uh, conclusion and recommendations. Uh, the Morotito field produced for, produced for the top of the, the mirror formation about 176,000 barrels of 23 degrees API oil between 2014 to 2018. The, in, in the area, five wells were delayed to two of them with hydrocarbon manifestation and one that was a commercial producer. According to the operator in the structure of Morochito 5, there are 273,000 barrels of oil remaining all by increasing the recovery factor to 45%. According to the interpretation of the INH, for the structure of Morochito 5, there is a remnant of resources between 460,000 barrels to 648 barrels with a recovery factor between 70.6% and 25%. This, this percent average used for the evaluation. A reprocessing of the 3D seismic is necessary to validate the structures present in the Morochito area. In the area of CPO11, the possibilities of anticline trends against the antithetical normal, normal file and pinch of the Guadalupe against the levels of mirror road carbonera were observed, and the complete interpretation of Loki is necessary to according of this of the account of all the prospectivity of this area. Finally, this is the area of CPO11 block will be available for nomination in the next update of the land map. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Arlex. So if someone have a question for Arlex or maybe any other questions related to Las Mercedes, we got a couple of minutes for answering them. The the questions will be read in Spanish and answer as well in Spanish. Daniel, just to inform everybody that the, uh, unfortunately the, the presentations from workshop number one, two, and three, I mean, have not been uploaded in, in the website of the, of the agency. I have been informed just some minutes ago that, that that process is going to be done today or the latest on Monday. So I promise you that for our next workshop on March 4th, everything is going to be loaded. And so you will be able to access all, all our presentations um, given in uh, during February. Sorry for that, but that, that's the latest. Uh, Daniel, I think that Daniel provided through the chat the, the, the address or the link to access the information, but uh, be a little bit patient, it's going to be ready today or the latest on Monday. Okay, uh, Daniel, go ahead. Thank you, Miguel. So as I was telling you to all of you, if you got any soft questions, it seems that's a new question. Uh, 
creo que es una pregunta para... Hay un, hay un par de preguntas para, para Arlex. La primera es de Evo Mariguera. Arlex, ¿qué tamaño tienen esos cierres que se señaló en el mirador en Carbonera C7? Y una pregunta de Santiago Sterling. Buenos días, ¿me podría informar el estado legal del área? Tengo entendido que tiene un proceso legal por la terminación del contrato con DCX. Eh, pues, eh, pues respondo la primera, pues eh, la, en, la, en la interpretación que se hizo de, de Morochito, pues el, el área que se, que se interpretó fue de 570, y 593 acres. Y, y pues el, el operador había, había hecho su interpretación con 200, creo que son 280 acres para el área de Morochito. Las dos áreas que iluminé en, el, en la parte de interpretación del, de, de la prospectividad de, del, del bloque CPO11, eh, no les estima una, un tamaño, pero más o menos tienen... Tienen cerca de, pues, de, de ancho, pues el de, el de falla antitética sería más o menos casi de dos kilómetros de ancho. Y pues el, el pinchado tiene cerca de casi ocho kilómetros de ancho. Y con respecto a la siguiente pregunta que es sobre el estado legal de, del proceso de terminación, pues no puedo adelantar mucho porque no, no, no tengo, el, no tengo en, el, en el momento la... El estatus, pero se está, está pronto a, a, a terminar de este, este tema. O sea, por eso hay que, hay que estar atento a, a las autorizaciones del, del mapa de tierras para poder saber si esta área pasa de ser reservada por la agencia a estar en área libre. Listo, Arlex, muchas gracias. Yo creo que no hay... Si ¿Alguien más tiene alguna pregunta? Si no, creo que daríamos por terminada la sesión de hoy. Okay. Listo. Muchas gracias a todos. Y nos vemos dentro de ocho días con la próxima presentación de la NH. Muchas gracias a Arlex, a Miguel. Y estaremos dentro de ocho días. Hasta luego.